Fellow students, proud parents, esteemed faculty, and random people who just watch these things on YouTube. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Younger siblings, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Now, I don't know exactly what this means, but I thought you guys should start getting ready to receive unearned patronizing advice from us from this day forward. <laughs> Some of you are probably looking up at this stage right now and thinking, who is this stone cold hottie? And how does she have such amazing hair? <laughs> well, that's Mayor Michelle Wu. <laughs> I hope she'll address this in her remarks. <laughs> Writing the speech was tough because, let's face it, this is Harvard. A place where dreams are narrowed down to slightly more lucrative dreams. <laughs> a place that reminds us that in this country, you can be accepted into the world's most illustrious academic institution through the sweat of your own brow, just like your old man and his old man before him. <laughs> A place that meets 100% of financial need for all students. This one has no punchline, it's just an amazing thing. Thanks, Daddy Harvard. But yeah, writing this speech was tough which is why I wrote it the same way I wrote all my assignments as a senior, not hungover, not buried in Lamont basement, and not late last night between the hours of 3 and 7 a.m. My diligence and rigor over the course of the last four years are much like the millions Jeffrey Epstein donated to Harvard. They have aged very well. <laughs> but... <laughs> It's thanks to not doing any of these things that I can confidently begin by saying congratulations, class of 2022. All of us are here today because this is the location that was chosen. <laughs> Some of us are also technically here because we were driven by the relentless fear of disappointing our parents, and I will now give you guys a few seconds to share an awkward look filled with unprocessed resentment and reluctant gratitude. <laughs> Today is all about us, the class of 2022, a class known by many as the greatest class by far, the Harvard of classes, if you will, or in the words of David Malin, the David Malin of classes. <laughs> We're a pretty unique class. For one thing, college was interrupted by the pandemic, which means that we're something of a hybrid group. I, for instance, was initially in the class of 2021, and it's too late to kick me off the stage. <laughs> the pandemic presented us with singular challenges, not only when we were studying online, but also when we came back. Our social ineptitude could no longer be guised as the new normal, and decidedly reverted to being the usual weird. We could no longer mute Section Kid, though if Section Kid was us, this was a sensational development. <laughs> and worst of all, we had to hear about everybody's gap years, including the people who, like, really found themselves in India, bro. <laughs> and unfortunately came back to tell us about it. <laughs> Still, we made it. Tomorrow, we graduate from Harvard. Four years ago-ish, we finally arrived on this beautiful campus, excited and a little nervous. We'd written our application essays about our plans to pursue lives of service and save some turtles. And those of us who just wanted to make bank had written about our plans to pursue lives of service and save some turtles. <laughs> We'd written about the struggles we'd faced and the sacrifices our families had made in the hopes of one day sending us to an institution such as this one. 
and those of us with neither struggles nor sacrifices had written about our great, great Aunt Helen, who crossed the Mediterranean one-legged in the late 1800s in a brave defiance of leprosy that was absolutely related to our involvement in the high school swim team. <laughs> but Harvard saw something in each of us. If there are two words that could sum up the four years that ensued, they would be transformative experience. A sentence Dean Karana bribed me to say earlier today. <laughs> But he was right. The time we spent here really did transform each of us. In my case, I am now a person who needs a job, whereas four years ago, I was just a person. <laughs> Everyone's experience here has been unique, starting with the different concentrations we pursued and the stereotypes attached to them. Economics concentrators like to joke that they're snakes, and the rest of us like to pretend that we haven't heard that joke every single day since we started college. But honestly, I think that label's unfair. Why should only one concentration get assigned an animal? So I took the liberty of coming up with a few others. <laughs> Social studies concentrators, you get the blowfish. You are actually incredibly intelligent creatures, but nobody realizes that because you were given such a stupid name. <laughs> Women, gender, and sexuality studies concentrators, you get the Chacoan peccary, because academia only acknowledged your existence in the mid-1970s, <laughs> and the average person is still likely to deny that you're a real thing. <laughs> Government concentrators, you guys are humans. Humans who play lacrosse. <laughs> and finally, pure math concentrators, you are the three turkeys that make intermittent appearances in Harvard Yard. We know you're there, but you've only been, out been sighted outside twice. <laughs> it's okay, guys, I can make that joke because I'm a pure math concentrator. I'm not, I just needed to get that on camera for the purposes of my job search. <laughs> Regardless of what we studied, the one thing all our Harvard journeys probably had in common, as Andrew said, was the experience of rejection. We got rejected from on-campus publications, musical groups, clubs, and the semi-secret, hyper-exclusive group that calls final clubs, finals clubs. <laughs> we got rejected from classes, internships, leadership positions, the Harvard undergraduate clean energy group, the Harvard Undergraduate Clean Energy Group again. The Harvard Undergraduate Clean Energy Group a third time? Seriously, guys, what is it? Is it my vibe? Ultimately, the only place that I can safely say rejected none of us was also the only place that I can safely say all of us wanted to be rejected from. The UC's mailing list. <laughs> Now, I'll be honest, some failures hurt more than others. The ones where we did everything right, put in the time, put in the work, and it still didn't work out. For instance, I dedicated the entirety of the last four years to roaming the yard aimlessly in Harvard sweatpants, lanyard, and keychain, with an improbable smile on my face and a large donut in each hand, and I still didn't get featured on Dean Karana's Instagram. <laughs> until yesterday's procession, when Dean Karana ruined this punchline by randomly posting me on his Instagram. <laughs> but I don't want to go too hard on you, Harvard. Remember when we were writing our applications, saying how badly we wanted to be here, how amazing we thought this place was? In a way, Harvard is our long-term girlfriend. In the courtship stages, back when nothing was guaranteed, we told Harvard that we loved the way it thinks and that it was not like other schools. <laughs> and now we're four years in, like, you put the toilet seat back up. <laughs> Except the toilet seat is actually divesting from fossil fuels. <laughs> I almost wish there was a physical image to represent that dynamic of groveling at the school's feet while we were applying and then proceeding to urinate all over it. Like, 
eager, aspiring prefrosh rubbing the foot of the John Harvard statue for good luck or something, and then accepted students, I don't know, peeing on it, drunk. <laughs> of course, the girlfriend analogy leaves out a lot, namely that Harvard also played something of a parental role. Our freshman year, they demanded that the yard be dry, no alcohol, which was basically Harvard saying, as long as you're under my roof, you live by my rules. Then we moved into our upperclassmen houses where we had drinks, parties, and even free condoms. And that was Harvard saying, if you're gonna do it anyway, I'd rather you do it in the house. <laughs> and finally, just this month, Harvard reminded us not to complete the celebrated tradition of jumping off the Weeks Bridge for our own safety, thereby becoming the first parental figure to say, if all your friends jumped off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge too? And have, yeah, actually be a realistic answer. But now, Harvard won't be parenting us anymore. It's time for that infamous place, the real world. Get ready for an endless series of, you went to Harvard? which will either mean that you said something really stupid or that you are hot. <laughs> the class of 2022 will go on to work in all sorts of fields and industries. Some of us will become doctors, teachers, firefighters, astronauts, detectives, and all the other jobs I totally know about as a grown adult. Those of us who spend a little too much time on LinkedIn are guaranteed to become data-driven thought leaders, passionate domain experts, or even creative self-starters. <laughs> and finally, some of us will also probably become villains because that's just plain statistics. <laughs> Either way, out there in the real world, our first challenge is going to be learning to speak normally again. No more elaborate academic jargon, no more weird Harvard inside jokes. FET will no longer be a beloved Elliott House tradition, but rather the acronym for federal excise tax. <laughs> the brothers will go back to being a term people use to refer to their actual male siblings. And finally, perhaps most difficult of all, a 15-minute walk will no longer be the punchline to quad-related quips, but rather a truly standard amount of time for walking from one place to another. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of you may be thinking, but Yumna, how will I signal to everybody I meet out there that I went to Harvard if I let go of all of that? Well, you can always tell them that you went to college in Massachusetts near Boston or in the Boston area. They'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, most of what I've said during the speech has been with the goal of giving us a little laugh on this memorable day. But before I go, I would like to share with my class my main takeaway from Harvard, which has been this. Let's not take life too seriously. Let's laugh at ourselves, at the successes and failures which we'll be bound to encounter, and let's laugh at institutions, especially powerful or intimidating ones like Harvard. Just not actual Harvard, because they haven't technically given us our diplomas yet. <laughs> and with that, closing time. Class of 2022, I am so, so happy for us. Be proud of the four years you spent here, regardless of whether you're graduating cum laude, summa cum laude, ipso facto, or persona non grata. <laughs> There's a lot to be thankful to Harvard for. The faculty who taught us with excellence and empathy, the staff who made us feel at home since day one. Perhaps above all, I am thankful for our student body, from the recent alumni whom I can only presume are in tears as we speak, flinging darts at cardboard cutouts of their landlords to the underclassmen who are basically at a really expensive summer camp, to us, the class of 2022, who are in a sweet spot that will last exactly three days. No matter what the real world will bring, I trust that we will march towards it with kindness, resilience, and courage of conviction, with love, an openness to laughter, and a strong moral compass, and above all, with the heavy, yet ultimately deeply important knowledge 
that some of you lost your virginities in a bunk bed. <laughs> Congratulations, class of 2022, and thank you so much.